So welcome. Uh, my name is Terrell Russell. I'm here from the IRODS Consortium. Uh, we are uh, kind of a subsidiary, not really, it's not a company. I work for university, uh, University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Uh, we're with the Rinsey booth, uh, booth 181. And I'm here today to talk about data management for grown-ups. And I'm going to go through a little bit about uh, what it is that we do and the types of use cases that, that we see across different disciplines. Find my button here. So the IRODS Consortium is itself a membership-driven organization. It's an open source project, and we give all of this away. The idea is that once it's interesting to someone and they use it in their enterprise, then we expect people to care about the future of the project and to join and become members. It's a sustainability play. There's no large amount of dollars involved. This is an open source project, and we all work for the uh, university. And of course, like I said, we're uh, kind of a group within RINCI which is a research institute uh, at UNC Chapel Hill. Here's some more words to say the same thing. Right now we've got 12, 13 members. Uh, we're growing. Last year we had five or six, and so we've doubled in the last 12 months. All of these groups represent organizations that either uh, sell hardware or they are organizations that have petabytes of data and have decided that they want to manage that without just a bunch of shell scripts. And so there are many hard problems in the world, and the things that IRODS basically addresses are some of these. We've heard from a variety of different organizations in different uh, disciplines, different uh, verticals. Uh, some of them need two or three of these things. Some of them are having problems with all of them. And so IRODS steps up and can help with almost all of these. So data management as a, as an, as a thing is actually really hard to define. A lot of people will see what they want to see in the definition. It, it covers many different areas. It has multiple meanings to different people depending on where you are in the organization, what types of problems you're trying to solve, and who's paying you, <laughs> right? And of course, different goals. So I'm gonna walk through a few of the things that uh, what, we, what we think data management means. It's really about access to information, how they get in the front door, how they have access over time, how you can terminate someone's access to data over, over time as well when their project is, is, is complete. It's about using standards to define what type of data you have in your system so that when people need to find it, they can use it uh, the, way that they, the way they expect to. You can use standardized tools to find it. It's about proving that data has not changed over time. You really don't want to lose access to the things that you've put in there. They're under management because you care about the data. So if it changes, that's a problem. You need to be able to identify that, roll it back, and fix it. It's about having multiple copies because things die and things fall apart. So you have to have multiple copies to make sure. It's about making sure that they're always available. It's about making sure that over time, if you're an institution that, def that is not just worried about the future, but if you're actually a cultural heritage institution and you and like a museum or a library, you need to make sure that you've got access to this stuff from a long time ago, and you need to make sure that you can migrate it from one type of hardware to another, as well as making sure that the formats don't change uh, out from under you. If you need to go from an older format to a new format, you can do that in an automated manner. Obviously, you have to have a backup plan, a recovery plan for when things don't work out, and then again, like I said, you've got to have provenance depending on what type of institution you are. If you need to prove that certain things happen to data at a certain time, and you need to be able to log that information, write it down, be able to prove that uh, certain events happen in a certain order, or be able to prove the negative, that someone did not have access to data, that might be a very important fact. And then one of the most important things here, the lawyers are very interested in this, it's as much about getting rid of the data at a certain time as it is making sure that you have access and copies of the data when you expect to. Deleting things on a, on a schedule is very important. And so in the past, you would do this through a series of policy points. Your organization would have a meeting. Important people would make decisions about what you're going to do with your data. And in the past, those would be manifested by having your physical files in a physical lock cabinet and someone would have keys. And so your policy was basically defined by who had the keys, right? It's kind of a very large sledgehammer approach, but that's what we had. And then we had computers, we had passwords, we had folders. And then we had lots of computers. And now you have lots of problems in order to keep this stuff straight. You've got to automate it, you've got metadata, it's all very confusing. 
turns out that the missing link here is that all of these things were dependent on people. And people are messy. They forget things. They have typos. They lie. <laughs> they leave. They graduate. They, you know, they retire. All of that is a problem if your goal is to keep this stuff around for hundreds of years. So I'm going to walk through four use cases really quickly. They cover slightly different areas, but they all touch on the same types of problems. So in the healthcare and life sciences area, they have identified the problem early because they have petabytes of data coming off of these sequencers, and they need to be able to automate these processes. So they have extensive data pipelines. They need to keep the state from, uh, they need to, <coughs> excuse me, the metadata needs to be written down in terms of storing the information along a, a, a series of, of timed events. And then, of course, they need to share the results back out to different people. A lot of time in these pipelines, one company will have an expertise, and they will be in charge of step two through seven. But then they need to pass it off to another organization, maybe an organization that has nothing to do with their bottom line, but they are all subcontractors to another organization. So they need to be able to share those things cleanly and with, with provenance as to what happened. So in terms of uh, what IROD's handles with that, we've got a, a workflow automation corner of our kind of uh, areas. And the priorities for the healthcare land is usually about reproducibility because it's actually science. And then, of course, the multi-institution uh, collaborations. Oil and gas is an up-and-coming uh, vertical for us. They've started to approach us. They are also swimming in data. They need to migrate from old stuff because they've been around for a long time. They've had data for a while. And now they need to do it in a more grown-up manner. And they're realizing that they need a, need a little bit of help. And so... They, they are uh, more interested in really about having multiple diverse data sources and being able to track them in a single namespace. And of course, they are extremely geographically diverse because they're looking for oil in geographically diverse places. They don't have just one data center. And ex of course, it's computationally intense. They're doing extreme amount of computation on these models to figure out where the oil is and where to put the holes in the ground. Oil and gas, turns out, is very interested in the namespace and of course, automating all these analytics to figure out where to drill the holes. Slightly different focus, but still part of the same uh, areas. We've started to hear from media and entertainment now. New valuable content created by humans. This is not coming out of a simulation. This is not coming out of a camera. It's not coming out of a sensor. This is people making creative works, you know, filming movies, making music. They need to be able to protect those assets over the long term. It's all about having popular content that is unique and is largely video and games. This is not necessarily standardized scientific data. They are most interested in access control and having lots of copies because they really don't want to lose this stuff. It can never be captured again. If it's a live performance, it will never be the same live performance. They have to make sure that they've got lots of copies of this stuff safe. And they also do not like it when it leaks early, right? So this is very important for them. Archives and records management. This is libraries, museums, as well as anybody who has a job keeping track of the data in their organization. They have a long view of their assets. They have to make sure that they're doing something in the open, well documented, so that the people who come 50 years from now will understand what they did today. This is really about having lots of copies, and it's really about providing very good metadata for search and browse. If you have a lot of stuff and you can't find it, it doesn't count. Library Land is very interested in the provenance of their data. They want to make sure that what they, were, they, what they received from a, from a benefactor 10, 20, 50 years ago is the same thing that they are providing now. It's all about metadata and replication. They are also interested in these other areas, but those are the priorities. So as you can see, this is very diverse types of groups that are interested in what we provide. IRODS handles all of these in an integrated manner. It's an open source platform for providing that common namespace, a metadata engine, a rule engine. We've got uh, the secure collaboration is baked in. You can federate with anybody else running IRODs, and you don't have to share your user base. You don't have to share your passwords. You can set up a, a bridge when you need it. You can work together, and then you can tear it down. And you don't have to find buckets of money to build out infrastructure together. That's all I have. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'll talk to you now or talk to you later.